Uh, dear Dharma friends and all practitioners, uh, it's a Sunday, uh, May 25th, 2024. We come back to our sessions of questions and answers in practicing. And this week, we will have a topic Making a vow. To practice continuously. So. In order to come back to our Buddha nature. Uh, the true self. Or. Uh, these words of explanations going against our habits. So when we said making a vow to practice diligently and continuously is the encouragement for us to do in the practice, practice continuously, process diligently. And we won't back up from our practice anymore. So the Buddha encouraged us, the Patriot encouraged us to make a vow, to make a practice in 30 years or when we cannot reach our Buddha nature, we will do another 30 years or our whole life to practice. It's not only the words, it's not only the talk, but it's the practice, the walk that we must do. So we always detach ourselves from all the thinking. We don't have anything to achieve when we have a thought that we have achieved anything, which means we're still in attachment of our, th of our thinking. So when we're still asking for something in our practice, when we still have a fear that we won't be able to do anything in our practice, and those are still our attachment to the elusive creation of our mind. So asking for something, think that we can achieve for something, or fear of something, those are the attachment that we had when we don't have the doubt when don't, we don't ask the questions. When we can keep our doubt continuously, we must ask the questions continuously and diligently. So in order to aid our practice, asking questions and raising doubts, these sessions of Dhamma Talk will encourage us, showing us the right path for us to go on. So because we always have attachment, we, we always have the ego that running after all the thinking, all the thoughts all the time, that's why the eight 
from the sessions of Dhamma talk, the aids from the Buddha Sutra, or the aids from the words of the patriarchs will help us to keep practicing and going toward our Buddha nature in order to free ourselves from all these thinkings and free ourselves from the circle of birth and death. So if you have any questions, please speak up. Miss Kim in, your hands pick up. I'd like to ask a question for uh, Adama friends in practice. During practicing, he has a question. When we asking the questions and sometimes he has a doubt. Sometimes he doesn't have the doubt at all. And uh, is that uh, the interest mind in practicing causing that sometimes he has a doubt and sometimes he doesn't have the doubt? Could you give us some word of encouragement on this? So practicing the Patriot Zen is mainly asking questions and raising doubts. As Huvan Zen Master said, that when you asking questions and raising doubts, which means you go back to your own Buddha nature to reflect yourself back to your own Buddha nature. And when you reach the roots of all ignorance, you'll be able to see your own Buddha nature. As a human being, we have a tendency to run after all the thoughts, all these words of understanding. And when we run after the words of understanding, uh, the words of explanation, which means we're not going back to our Buddha nature. However, if we practice continuously, eventually we will overcome this kind of habit. As like what Azem Master said that when you asking the questions 
and you have the doubt, then continue to ask questions. And nothing that we, nothing else that we should do, we just pay attention to the roots of our ignorance. So our practicing continuously and diligently will help us to ignore everything going on surrounding us. So that's why we said that when you do the practice, you must believe in our own Buddha nature. You must solve the problem of the circle of birth and death. It's just like the true practice is just like a mother love for her kids. There's no conditions in her love for her kids. She just automatically love her kids. So when we doing the practice, we ask you to ask questions and raising doubts. Sometimes you have a doubt, sometimes you don't have a doubt. You don't know if you have the right doubt or the curiosity doubt. That happens for all practitioners at the beginning of practicing this method. Even for people who've been practicing for a while, these thoughts is always arising in your head. You still need to go back to your practice. When you can keep your practicing continuously, then eventually you will overcome these thinking. So usually the habits, the thinking, the ignorance always interfere with your practice and those are the attachments if you're running after them. So when you have these problem, you're asking questions and the wise man, the patriarch will help you to go back to your practice by giving you some Dharma talk. There's nothing else that you should do but going back to your practice, asking the questions and raising doubts. When you're asking the questions and raising doubts, that is a way to go back and get familiar with your stream of practice. So when you reach the roots of our ignorance, then you can detach yourself from all these thinking and you won't hold on to all these thoughts anymore. Uh, just like your thoughts, your mind and your body are all together. So at that moment, the motions or the stillness are the same. So in order to 
reach this roots of our ignorance, you must vow to practice continuously and diligently. And realize that the circle of birth and death is there for you to solve. So you must practice continuously. And just like Minh Bổn Trung Phong Zen Master uh, taught us that we need the eyes of wisdom, we need the practice diligently. We need to go back to our Buddha nature. So in order to do the practice, you must have the eyes of wisdom. You must detach yourself from all the thinking and you must practice diligently. You need the three characteristics, the three will work together in order to help you to walk toward your goal. If you're missing one out of the three, you attach yourself still to the thinking. When you have a eyes of wisdom and you don't want to practice then you won't be able to practice continuously start your practice to walk toward your diligent your uh, goal When you do the practice with the three criteria, if you're missing a belief in your own Buddha nature, then you cannot start your practice even. So, you won't be able to reach the Buddha nature if you don't believe in your own Buddha nature. So as a new practitioner, sometimes you're asking questions and you don't have doubt or you're having doubt. Everything happening, you still need to go back to asking questions and raising doubts. Write doubt or curiosity's doubt. Still, the goal is reached by asking questions and raising doubt. So when you're listening to the Dharma talk, these are just like an encouragement words for you to go back to your practice and go on the right path. Just go back to your practice and asking questions and raising doubt, doing that continuously, diligently. And that is the way that all the patriots 
all the practitioner doing. So only when you practice, you can experience the true meanings of these words. The true meanings of the Dhamma talk. So when you don't practice and you just talk and not walk in, then you won't be able to reach your goal. Is that understandable? Yes, thank you for your words. Uh, can speak up. In the Langim Sutra, um, when you go back to the stream of practicing, uh, you must have the practice 24 hours continuously or it's just a fragment of times that you have this Could you give us an uh, explanation on this? When you already enter the streams of practice continuously, then you have already practicing like an alhat. So when your practice is going to 24th hour continuously with the doubts. It's just like a practice. Going automatically. So that's a root of our ignorance and you want to destroy this ignorance in order to see your own Buddha nature. However, when you still knowing that you reaching this, ignorance, which means you're still running after the thinking. Only the not knowing is the one that you had during the doubt. When you're still knowing, which means you are not entering the stream of thought, of uh, practicing yet. When you reach the roots of all ignorance, you automatically detach yourself from all the thinking because the doubt and only the doubt can have us to lead us to this state of mind. Because we always have a tendency to know what's going on with our practice so that knowing is our attachment and when you're asking the questions the answers from the wise men on the patriot from your dharma friends will help you to detach yourself from those thinking So when you're entering the stream of practice, you automatically detach yourself from the subjective aspect of your mind. And 
you reach the roots of our ignorance in a fragment of times when you detach yourself from all the thinking and you realize your own Buddha nature, you get enlightenment. And that is the times that you will detach yourself from this circle of birth and death. Even though you still have all these thinking happenings, happenings, but it's not interfering with your practice anymore. However, there's still the practice right there that we believe in when we leave the objective and subjective aspect of our mind, our mind reach the stillness and we don't attach ourselves to the stillness. We must continue to practice. And from here, we will also detach ourselves from all the achievement that we get. So that is the explanations the progress of practice. However, we don't just attach ourselves to these, but we must do the practice and we will automatically detach ourselves from all of these words, but we will gain our own experience on these by practicing diligently. There's no stillness, there's no actions in the hearing, there's no attachments on our six senses, even though The not knowing is there, but doesn't mean like the not knowing of a dying pers person. Is that understandable? Yes, thank you. We running down time, so we we'll see you in another session.